this is the one of the frames for an ultra. During the during the machining process, they're bolted together, uh, and while they're together, all of this boring is done for bearings, so it's absolutely concentric. Uh, this is surface ground on the back and bolted to a face plate, uh, and then uh, surface ground on the edges and or machined on the edges. There's a that's just faced off. That's ground on the bottom. So once these are separated and put onto a a ground base plate like this, then you have an absolute, everything is square, everything is true, and uh, that actually winds up to be uh, more accurate from my testing than, than to actually line bore the frame after it's assembled. So we need to take this apart, get the bearings in it, and then press the uh, bearings onto the spindle. So the first thing we're gonna do is get this front frame and back frame taken off. See in the back, there's a rather massive snap ring. And the reason for the snap ring is that uh, the, in order to bore straight through with the two uh, frame uprights together, it just works out that you're going, you're going the opposite way for the rear frame. So you have to bore through straight, and then you have to have some, uh, some way of retaining the bearing at a specific spot. Uh, there's two ways you can put these bearings together. The aluminum frame, you can do a press fit, which is what this back bearing will be. Or you can do a slip fit and glue the bearing in with specially made uh, fluid that's for that purpose. So in this particular case, I don't want to stress on this frame, so we're going to glue it in. This is a Loctite, I'm going to focus on that, Loctite 609. All right, uh, it's a retaining compound. This is specifically what it's made for. We want to have nice clean surfaces. So this is just lacquer thinner. We're going to clean the bearing surface off and the inside of this uh, upright. It's possible to ding this up a little bit if you're putting in the massive snap ring from this side, which I did manage to do. So I'm going to use it to clean those dings out of there. Don't leave them in there. All right, so we take our fixative. Little tiny, some tiny fraction of an ounce of this stuff. I want the bearing label sticking out. So we're just going to put this on here, somewhat near the bottom, uh, bottom reference, referencing the way it's going to go on this table. And then the same thing in here. I'm going to put some in here. This is pretty much a zero slip fit, so it's not going to take very much to spread around in there. Just fortunate because there's not all that much in this little tiny two. So that's that. I'll put that up in there. There we go. One down. Several more to go. That a few hours and that'll be in there for sure permanent. So that takes our attention to this guy. There's a couple of little dings in there which we want to get out. So I'll go to my handy million year old set of jewelers files. And I, don't, I doubt if you can see this on the camera, but there's some little tiny dings right there. It doesn't take very much to hold a bearing up, sort of like a piece of, think of it like a piece of grit in your eye. You think, you think there's a boulder in there, but when you look at it, it's really tiny. It doesn't take very much between the bearing and the bearing seat 
to really create a lot of distortion in the bearing, even with an aluminum housing. All right, so that's good. And this bearing here goes into this guy. And here's a situation, a typical press-in situation, which I can do on this one because I got plenty of meat there. So we're going to retain this guy with a press fit, but I don't want to try to hammer this in there. And uh, we can press fit it on the carbon press or hydraulic press. But there's a slicker way to do it, especially if you're using aluminum. So I'm going to show you what that is now. I have two front frames uh, with press fit bearings are in the oven. I'm bringing them up to about 450 degrees, they're aluminum, and that will cause them to expand to take up the 3000s press fit, and the bearings should uh, just drop right into those holes. Now, once the aluminum cools off, and you'll have your press fit, and you didn't have any stress on the on any of the mechanics or the or the bearing to get it in there. So that's the way we do that. Now, I, something you want to do is put the when you heat up those frames, you put the bearing in, especially if a bearing has rubber seals like this. The rubber seal is only going to hold only going to tolerate about 200 degrees or so. So you got a frame that's at 450 degrees, and you got you can put this bearing in there, drop it in there. Heat's going to start to transfer across. So, uh, what you want to do is get the heat out of that frame as quickly as possible before too much of it transfers into that bearing. The way to do that is to put that frame on another piece of aluminum, and that heat will just go, will suck right out of that frame. All right? There's our guy. There's our bearing. Miller time. So, there again, make sure that this. We're going to get the heat out of this guy as fast as you can. So we're going to put some, you may or may not have some big chunks of aluminum hanging around. I, I typically have lots of them, so not a problem for me, but uh, don't put water on it or anything like that. Just draw the heat out. Why don't you want to put water on it? If you have water on the bearing and the bearing is hot and the bearing cools down, it will suck the water into the bearing. This is never a good thing. So don't don't cool it off with any kind of liquid because it will wind up inside that bearing. All right, that's one down.